Yeah, Michael Collier. Right. Yo, give me my love. I need more than that. Y'all must not know me. All right, all right. Take it easy. Take it easy. Where did Jay? Did Jay leave? Cause I, I brought him some lotion. Jay, come and get this lotion, dog. They sent this out for you. And I, you got a lot of courage to take your shirt off like that. That's a, whoo! That was a lot of courage right there, dog. I got a weight problem, but it ain't like that. It ain't like that. And I ain't taking my shirt off. I'm proud of you. I want, I want to introduce myself to you. A lot of you folks don't know anything about me. Just tell you a little bit about myself. I come from your average American family. In fact, my kid brother is currently in the witness relocation program. Uh, but I'm not talking about government witness relocation. I'm talking about Jehovah Witness relocation. They, yeah, they tired of him knocking on the door all the time, which is weird, because we Catholic. Any Catholics? Any Catholics? You, really? You Catholic? Me too, but I'm a happy Catholic. I've already accepted the fact that I'm going to hell. Let me, let me tell you what happened. We went to Catholic church, but we couldn't afford the school. I remember the time the priest come to my house. He was talking to my mama. He said, Miss Kaya, how come your kids don't go to Catholic school? She said, oh, no, we prefer to beat them at home. And I don't know, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but my kid brother, we thought he was possessed when he was born because he had them three sixes in his forehead. Okay, I'm lying. He really had a full house. But we cleaned him out. We cleaned him out. Oh, let me tell you, let me tell you what we, used, what we did to my father because my father sometimes would strike us, you know, hit us and stuff, and I didn't like that, so I'd always get him back. We'd be sitting around the dinner table, we have guests, he reached for something, I'd do this, you know, do this. But this is how we really got him, this is how we really got him. He, he believes in cryonics, you know, where you freeze the body, bring the body back, and he insisted that when he died, we freeze the body. So we got him back. When he died, we had him cremated, but we put the ashes in the refrigerator. So that worked out, that worked out pretty good. Did y'all see Boondocks? Have you been seeing that new show, Boondocks? That's a, oh, it's, it's very funny. But they use the N-word a lot. And I heard my man John Sally in his radio show talking about the N-word. And I see we have a European in the audience. Raise your hand, my friend. You, white guy, that's what I mean, white guy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I call all white people. And let me tell you something, my friend. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna tell you now why I don't use the N-word, my friend. And if I'm out of line here, you raise your hand and correct me, sir. Cause you're gonna be our white representative. What's your name? Chuck. That's a nice, firm, white name, Chuck. So, if I'm wrong, just raise your hand. I don't use the N word. If you've heard me, you know I don't speak it. When I'm talking to people, I don't use it on the stage. And I really don't use it when we got company. Now, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Europeans, Europeans over the centuries have assimilated. Now, assimilated is to take on the culture and the styling of another culture by hanging out with that culture. Like, for instance, white folks will tell you that are kings of rock and roll, but little Richard is still alive. He'll tell you who created that art form. And y'all have messed up the electric slide. So, I, you got me, no, really. So I don't like to use the word around you because I don't want you to take on the word, say it around some of my friends, and get hurt. Now, on the other hand, <laughs> black folks have taken this same word that's used to make us feel bad about ourselves. It's a word created to hold our necks to the ground, but when we together, we suck all the power out of it, kick it, spin it, flip it. Whoo, that's my nigga. Did you see that nigga? Did you see? But if you say that word around company, they can forget one day, golly gee, that's my nigga. You got to knock somebody out. So I don't, I don't use that word. I don't use that word, my friend. Now, here's a joke. This guy had amnesia, amnesia. Couldn't remember a damn thing. Every place he went, he carried a little black book around in his inside coat pocket. Now, in that book, he kept all his pertinent information in alphabetical order. See, that way somebody asked him a question, he'd look it up in the book. See? <laughs> See, man? Anyway, the guy man is on bed. Another guy approached him. He says, pardon me, sir. Pardon me. Is your name Mr. Smith? Mr. John Smith. The guy whips out the book. He says, names. 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 My name. Smith, yeah. Yeah, my name is Mr. Smith. He said, Mr. Smith, you ever been to Chicago before? The guy said, travel, 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 travel. Chattanooga, Chicago, yeah. Yeah, I was in Chicago. He said, fine, why are you in Chicago? Did you happen to meet Mrs. Myron Breckenridge? The guy says, a quaint. Tance, quaints, quaints, quaint. Bridge, Bri Breckenridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I met Mrs. Breckenridge. He says, fine, why are you there? Did you happen to have an affair with Mrs. Breckenridge? The guy says, affairs, affairs, affairs. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I had an affair with Miss Breckenridge. He said, well, I'm Mr. Breckenridge, and I don't like it. 
Yeah, the book said opinions. Opinions, opinions. Damn, I didn't either. Okay, now, let me say this to you. Hold up. Hold up, y'all. I ain't got no lot of time. Let me say this to you. Um, please be careful when you're going to the fancy smancy restaurants nowadays, okay? I went to the restaurant the other day, and I got to tell you, it really shocked me what happened. They hurt this guy. I got to tell you what happened. I was in a restaurant the other night. They had Louis the 13th. Anybody hip to that? Louis the 13th is one of the finest cognacs made by man. $170 a shot. The empty bottle, $770 is hand-blown glass. This guy came in, ordered six. They lined him up. He drank them straight down. Bartender said, whoa. You sure drink those fast. He said, you drink fast, too, if you had what I got. They said, what you got? He said, 50 cent. 50 cent, yeah. <laughs> they were still whooping his behind when I left. Ooh, ooh, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I have a, I have a standard joke I like to do. Uh, and, and this joke, I've done it many times, but I love this joke. I'm going to share it with you. Remember, I do old jokes. I like old jokes. I don't think an old joke should die. Just cause the person that wrote it did. He can't use it no more. Red Fox, one of the greatest comedians in my lifetime. Red Fox created a 75 comedy album. Red is dead. He, he can't use that joke no more. What are we supposed to do with all these great jokes? Throw them away? Heck no. I tell them to you, you tell them at work, you're a hero and you pay no royalty. This joke, 42 years old. The man that wrote this joke died three weeks ago last Tuesday. Help yourself. <laughs> it's the in the groove joke. This guy goes into the restaurant. Obviously, he had an attitude problem. <laughs> Walk right up to the waiter, said, excuse me, Bubba. But I want you to go in the back. You tell that cook I want a cheeseburger. Not too greasy, not too dry, but right in the groove. And hey, while you're at it, throw in a large order of french fries. Not too crunchy. Not too soft, but right in the groove. And here, while you're at it, you might as well whip up a chocolate milk shake. Not too thick, not too thin, but right in the groove. The man went in the back, talked to the cook. Came back out five minutes later. He said, look, the cook said, tell you to kiss his behind. Not to the left, not to the right, but right in the groove. Now, look. Cute joke. Wait, I got another cute one. Let me, let me do a quick cute one. Uh, cause I, I want to give you a joke you can go back and tell. And that's the world famous potato joke. These four potatoes was out dancing. How could you tell which one was kind of loose? One of them kept saying, Idaho, Idaho. <laughs> now, prior to running out of here, I want to thank uh, Tom Joyner for allowing me to be on his show. Again, again, how many shows Tom got? Like nine shows, right? He got like two TV shows, three radio shows. The man is phenomenal, and he always remembers me and brings me. So I thank you. I really want to thank Rosa Parks for all she gave us as she has passed. All that she gave us is so very good. And my only wish, and I prayed, that they got enough chairs in heaven because I don't want her to go up there starting no mess. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Michael Kaya. Thank you, and good night. Come on.